Linda. All right, so we're here to talk about testing in temporal. Uh, you want to say hey, Val? <laughs> um, Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Deverell consultant for temporal. Yeah, you've been working on a, on a tutorial series, I think our essentially our first uh, official tutorial series, uh, building an e-commerce web app. Um, so you want to recap like what we've done so far, like what people should know uh, pre precursor to this? Yeah, exactly. So in part one, um, talked about setting up a basic long-lived workflow. The key idea there is in temporal, like a shopping cart isn't an object in the database. It's a function that's running that has its own internal state. So we, uh, so a cart is, or the life cycle of a shopping cart is represented in a workflow. Um, in part two, I kind of discussed some, um, something that would be tricky to implement with a, uh, with kind of conventional web applications, but easy with temporal, which is sending an abandoned cart notification. Um, the idea there is if, uh, if I go to this um, e-commerce store, I enter a few things into my cart and then I get distracted by, uh, by a Slack ping and I forget about it for three hours. Um, I, as, the, um, as the owner of the e-commerce store, I wanna send you an email and remind you and maybe even be like, hey, here's 10% off, finish, check out your cart. Um, so that's tricky to do with a traditional web app architecture just because um, set timeout in JavaScript is not durable. <laughs> so you can't really say like, oh yeah, wait for uh, wait for 20 minutes and if nobody does any, and if the user doesn't do anything, um, then send them an email. It's also hard to scale horizontally because um, all different workers need to coordinate who is doing, uh, who's responsible for actually pulling and sending that email. With Temporal, that's super easy. Um, and then in part three, we talk about, uh, we talk about testing that. So, um, so the way that uh, the way that you interact with the shopping cart is um, is via queries and signals. So query is how you get the current state of the shopping cart, and uh, signal is how you add things to the shopping cart or remove things from the shopping cart or checkout. Um, so testing is all about um, sending signals and uh, queries to the um, to the workflow, making sure it's doing the right thing, um, as well as as well as well controlling time because temporal. Um, the big advantage of testing with temporal is like time is fully stuffed out, so you can advance time and make sure that uh, that your app does the right thing. Yeah, I think, and honestly, it just is a huge uh, value proposition of temporal because it gives people a lot of confidence in their asynchronous stuff. Um, and you know, as for, as hard as it is to create a web app that that is that has signals coming in like the like in part two of your your tutorial um part three i think is where it really shines because um you know we also have testing figured out and i think most people but, but they usually stop when they just implement the feature <laughs> um and so yeah it, i think a lot of users asked asked about testing and and uh, so i thought we should just make a video about it walking through the code um answering any questions that may come come along, along the way and just making generally more content on testing for Temporal um, because it's one of our key value propositions. Yeah, yeah, Tents, testing with Temporal is much easier. Um, I do really like how like the Go SDK comes with kind of like basic utilities to stub activities out as well as, uh, as, well as the ability to advance time. And the thing that I really like about that is kind of like um, in Temporal, even in your production app, like time is already kind of is already stubbed out essentially. So like it's not a it's not an unnatural thing to do. You're not kind of like faking a uh, you're not faking a runtime basically like you are like Jest does. You're like actually kind of like running the uh, Temporal gives you the ability to actually like control the uh, the um, how to put it gives you the ability to kind of like control your workflow in like a really kind of like deeply integrated way. Control time, just say control time. <laughs> Nobody knows what that means, but it's provocative. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, it's like time traveling, debugging, but for back end. <laughs> uh, um, another thing, actually, so going <laughs> exactly. Um, in in our YouTube channel, actually, we we had another video by Tiho on versioning, and that's another area in which we can, we're basically using event histories to help you verify that you haven't broken your uh, your previous code when you migrate versions. Uh, and I think it's it's a form of testing. It's a form of like uh, essentially snapshot testing 
of your workflows um, and then verifying that you haven't had regressions when you when you change them and those are just key to moving faster you know with your with your systems it's it's just i can't believe i don't know how people do it otherwise <laughs> like this is this this is the only way i see see doing uh doing back-end systems now it's pretty fun um shall we shall we talk about test setup yeah absolutely so let's start with uh, the first section so um again the programming language for this blog post series is go just because like um yeah go is what i'm most familiar with outside of node uh did a lot of work with Go back in the day. Um, so basic setup, uh, testing workflows using Go test, um, and this uh, this library called Testify. I haven't used it before, but that's what our docs uh, use. So that's what I'm going to be using for this one. Um, let's see here. So general idea, get your imports right, basic boilerplate. Um, but, uh, but the objects that come into play here, um, so with Go, every uh, every function in the test.go file that starts with uppercase T test is something that Go test will uh, will run as a test. So the idea here is that um, you create a uh, you create this unit test suite. So Testify sets up this unit test suite for you, and um, and then you can run it. So that's uh, that's the basic that's like the basic hello world for Testify. Um, that has nothing to do with temporal, but where temporal kind of comes in is um, is this uh, test workflow environment. Um, the test workflow environment object is um, is what is how you interact with kind of temporal code. It's what, it's your entry point for uh, stubbing out activities and for controlling time. Yeah, I guess I'll just briefly point out like you're basically saying we don't care what test library or test tooling that you use. Just use our SDK, which which is where the test suite dot test workflow environment comes from, um, and that just slots right into your your preferred testing suite, essentially. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're uh, we're not opinionated on which Go um, testing setup you use, um, just as long as you have some way of creating a uh, new test workflow environment like what I just highlighted. Boom. And um, then yeah, after test, simple, uh, both pretty boilerplate. The, uh, the important thing is um, setting up a new workflow environment. Awesome. So All right. Then, um, so then, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at our first test. So uh, first test is going to be this uh, this test underscore add to cart. Um, the underscore is to uh, is to prevent go or go test from running it automatically um, because we want to run it through the uh, through Testify. Uh, let me just unfold all these things real quick. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so let's see here. So the general idea here is um, a shopping cart has an initial cart state, which is uh, basically it's um, it's an object that has an empty array items. Um, we uh, and then we execute the uh, we execute a workflow. Um, again, in temporal, a a workflow or a shopping cart is a workflow. So let me just pull that. Pull up the shopping cart workflow. Um, it's kind of long and hard to digest just by looking at the uh, just by walking through it on um, in a video. Um, you can read it, but the uh, the general idea here is that the entire like one function execution corresponds to one shopping cart object. So like you have this. Uh, so you ex when you execute a workflow, you're basically creating a new shopping cart. Um, when you um, when you execute a query, so this query handler, you're uh, you're getting the current state of the shopping cart, and then there's basically this infinite for loop, where um, where the shopping cart is listening for signals that modify the uh, the, the current state of the shopping cart. Um, so in order to test that, um, so this first test is basically testing that you can uh, you can create a shopping cart and then you can add something to the shopping cart. So the idea here, um, I execute this workflow. Um, this register delayed callback um, tells Temporal to basically execute this after one millisecond of virtual time. Now that's um, that's going to be important later because this isn't actually one millisecond of wall clock time. It's one millisecond of like virtual time in temporal's uh, temporal world. 
Um, for the purposes of this, it doesn't matter, but, um, but when this number starts getting very big, it will matter. Um, so what this test does, uh, so first things first, executes a query, um, make sure there's no errors, and then make sure that the cart is initially empty. And then I'm going to send a, uh, I'm going to send an add to cart signal. So this entire block right here is me sending a signal to the, uh, to the shopping cart. Um, the, uh, one of the intro, one of the kind of idiosyncrasies of testing, um, temporal with go right now is that, um, is that, uh, signals are asynchronous. So you actually need to register a separate callback if you want to read the results of your signal. Uh, so that's why there's this separate callback um, that kind of like blocked me for a little while when I was first uh, when I was first working with this. But long story short, um, you add uh, you add one millisecond, and then you can read the results of this um, of the query that you sent. So executing get cart, um, and you end up getting one item in the shopping cart. So that's kind of so that's just like a basic hello world like um, oh you can uh, you can send a signal and it actually impacts your shopping cart. Awesome. Would you call this like an integration test? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. It really depends on your definition of <laughs> test. But I mean, I would I would more call this a unit test because um, again, the way that temporal or the way that temporal thinks about testing is um, again, so activities are basically what handle all the side effects, right? So like if you're making an HTTP request, you're writing to a database, you're doing something, uh, you're doing something that is outside of the temporal system. Um, that is in an activity, and generally, with activity, and generally, when you test workflows, you stub out activities. So I would consider this more of a unit test. Gotcha. And I want to highlight. Uh, so you're using time dot millisecond times one, and then time dot milliseconds times two to, to make sure these things happen in sequence, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can't read your you can't read your own write in the <laughs> same in the same millisecond. It's right. um, it's, an, it's a quirk in the in how temporal's testing works right now. I'm not familiar enough with uh, with exactly why. All I know is that's how it, that's how it is. I tried very hard to do it the other way and uh, it didn't work. Uh, I, signals synchronous signals is a popular very very popular request. In fact, I just got it internally within from one of our employees. Um, so it's something that we are considering very heavily. Um, but by default, temporal, temporal defaults to an asynchronous first mindset. Everything's asynchronous until, until otherwise mentioned. Uh, so <laughs> I think, I think that's, that's what you kind of run into. But uh, as you found, there's, there's ways around it. Um, and uh, it's, it's really not that you know, uh, painful, hopefully. Um, but yeah, OK, so that's, that's a basic unit test. Uh, that's a. <laughs> That's, so that tests uh, signals and queries, right? Yeah. Actually, no, just, just signals. Yeah. Well, uh, signals and queries. I guess um, it's hard to test a signal without a query just because okay. you have no way of like look peering into the internal state. Yeah. I guess you can make sure that like uh, I sent the signal and the cart didn't crash. Um, but another interesting thing that's worth noting here is um, so uh, execute workflow is technically, uh, is technically blocking. So, um, if you were to say move uh, this register delayed callback to after execute workflow, um, this uh, this register delayed callback won't execute, so yep. it won't it won't work. Anything to note about the console output when you run a single test like this, like a very simple test? Do we output it? Uh, test. See what happens. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, I I love Go. Uh, it's so strict. <laughs> I know. And mock. Yeah, mock. You have an unused variable. Obviously, that's a bug. <laughs> I wish there was a setting that just said, like, hey, this is okay. I know this is, you know, unused, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably some flag I'm not familiar enough with Go to know. Um, if you're a listener, please, uh, who knows, please forgive me. Yeah. Um, so this is, okay, this is from us, from Temporal, uh, saying that we skip time. What is the 10-second thing? Um, I'm not 100% sure what the 10 second thing is. Okay. Mm. Well, we'll, we'll oh, figure it out. I think I actually, I think I actually know what that is. And that's, okay. um, that's due to the, uh, the abandoned cart timeout that we'll get to later. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, that's something to talk about a little bit later, but 
Um, so let's see here. So the second test that I have here is a space is just test remove from cart. Um, as you might imagine, it's kind of the same thing as test add to cart, except for the first thing it does is um, it adds two product or two instances of the same product to the shopping cart instead of one. Um, and then it's then, uh, let's see here, executes a query to make sure that the, uh, that the items are in the cart. And then executes a, uh, and then executes a separate signal removed from cart in order to, oh boy, I'm embarrassed here because this should be removed from cart signal. But on the other hand, well, this takes care of that. Interesting. Um, so you have kind of duplicate information. Yeah, a little bit of uh, a little bit of sloppiness there. My mistake. <laughs> we'll patch that up later. But hey, it runs. The test runs. So <laughs> it does run. <laughs> the interesting thing here is um, you see how this uh, this query is actually after the workflow is done executing. Yep. Um, so like when a work after a workflow is done, you can actually execute queries against it in tests, and that's kind of how you um, you kind of like how to put it. You like assert on like the final state of the uh, of the work of the workflow. Oh, why didn't you choose this for the previous uh, strategy? Um, I think it's actually it would be possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could entirely move this yeah, line move out. Yeah. down there uh, after this um, the s dot true or anywhere after the execute flow. Um, the important thing is I would have to move the contents of the register delayed callback. I could move the entire register delayed callback call. Okay. Oh um, yeah. So bottom line, you can execute queries against the workflow after it's done, and sometimes that's useful. Um, saves you from an extra register delayed call call, I guess. Yeah. Uh, seeing as uh, so, for viewers, uh, you're also a maintainer of the mongoose ORM, <laughs> uh, and I think you have you have a lot of uh, opinions on on how to do. Uh, this kind of testing. Should we have like a cleanup test between stages type of thing stage? You know what I mean? Like a, like a test cleanup. Um, right, right now you're just creating every workflow from scratch, but um, is, is there, uh, have you, did you consider like a cleanup stage in between tests? Um, it didn't seem necessary here just because um, each time I'm creating a new workflow, so like, as long as the workflow there, um, as long as I'm not reusing the same workflow between tests, um, yeah. should be fine to create a new one. On the other hand, I, uh, full disclaimer, I haven't written tests like this at scale. Like I, I haven't seen what the, uh, the impact of writing like thousands of tests like this would be. So okay. um, yeah, don't have a good answer for you there, unfortunately. It's something to consider, right? Like it's, some, it's a pattern that you see for like the larger scale and longer running tests sometimes. Um, Cool. Yeah. Well, beauty of temporal is uh, there's no long running tests, as we'll see. <laughs> at least, um, at least you know, in theory, in practice, theory is no different from practice. But mm -hmm. so yeah, third, um, third, and slightly more interesting test um, is testing checking out. So we're going to add a few things to the cart, and we're going to execute an actual activity, um, an activity that like checks out and uh, talks to Stripe in order to charge the user. Um, let me just unfold everything real quick. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I give you the fold all command, but there's there's actually other commands to only fold first level. Um, we should have done that one. <laughs> yeah, probably should have. But yeah, so let's let's walk through real quick the uh, the test checkout um, test. Uh, so yeah, creating a creating a new shopping cart. Um, the interesting thing here is we're going to create a uh, create an activities object, and we're going to uh, we're going to stub out this create stripe charge function, um, and basically make it just um, return nil. So make it return no, that no error occurred. Um, so this is how you basically stub out an activity and say that oh okay like pretend the stripe charge succeeded. Run the rest of the uh, run the rest of the logic. That's really and, useful. Uh, yeah. So the, must, must the must the return function of the mock exactly match the the original activity? Uh, yes, the right. return values anyway. Yeah. So um, let me pull up the create stripe charge activity if I can. 
Yeah, so here we go. Here's the uh, here's the create stripe charge activity function. So as you can see, it takes two parameters, uh, context and shopping cart or the cart state. And that's the, uh, the same parameters here. And then the return value is just um, an error. Yep. So in this case, we're returning an error. Error is hard code to be nil. So in Go, that means uh, no error occurred. Uh, Stripe charge went through successfully. So yeah. Okay. So first things first, um, add a product, add one product to the cart. And then we're going to send a, and then in a separate register delayed callback, I have a query that makes sure that the item is in the cart, just a quick spot check. And then we send this uh, this checkout signal. So uh, checkout signal takes in an email address just to say like, oh, this is the person who's uh, who's checking out. And um, then what the test does is it ex it, it asserts that um, that the workflow is completed after uh, after we've sent the checkout. Um, one thing that I would love to put here is like asserting that the um, that the Stripe activity was actually called, but I haven't done that yet. Gotcha. Why would you? Why was that necessary? Um, well, technically, there's no guarantee that the uh, that the Stripe activity was called at all in this. All I all I know is so it was mocked out, but um, but who knows? There could be some bug uh... that, you know, that the Stripe activity was never called to begin with. So would you do like a Boolean toggle type of thing? Yeah, I think that's what I do in the um, in the last test. Okay, let's see it. Yeah, the last test is the most interesting one. This is where we test the uh, the abandoned cart workflow. Um, so general idea here is for development purposes, I made the abandoned shopping cart timeout ten seconds, um, and for a real e-commerce app, it would probably be more like several hours at least. But uh, but you know who knows? It could be ten seconds. And what this does, um, let's see here. So basically, if I haven't sent a, uh, if I haven't sent an abandoned cart email for this uh, for this workflow yet, and uh, the shopping cart has um, has more than zero items, I'm going to basically like add a future. Uh, basically, say that like if I don't get any other signals for uh, for abandoned cart timeout, I'm going to execute this entire function right here. And what this function does is it executes an activity, um, specifically this send abandoned shop or abandoned cart email activity, which is this function right here. Um, long story short, uh, register, um, uh, use the Mailgun SDK to send an email. Got it. Um, so what this test is going to do, let me comment it. And yeah, remember that it's 10 seconds. So that's why we have this right here. Yeah, uh, floating point rounding, I think. Yeah. So let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. General idea here. Okay. Test abandoned card. I have a, uh, once again, activity struct. I'm going to stub out this, um, this abandoned card email. And make it return um, return nil. So again, same function signature returns nil means there's no error. Um, what I the one thing that's different here from the previous um, from the previous test is I'm assigning this send to variable um, as a way of ensuring that we're uh, we're sending an email to the right email address. Um, could probably do that in the previous test suite, but I didn't do that. So sure. So yeah, once again, um, add uh, add an item to the cart, send an update email signal to uh, to change the uh, to change the email address, and then I'm going to register a very long uh, register delayed callback or relative to other ones where so abandoned cart timeout plus timeout millisecond times two. Um, I don't think the times two is strictly necessary. I think I could get away with times one, but uh, but I forget exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the general idea is I'm going to wait for uh, wait for ten seconds, and then um, and then make sure that uh, that this send to variable in this um, in this mock was set. Right. If that variable has it, then pretty definitively the signal was received. So yeah, exactly. But now the uh, the interesting thing. So let's run the whole uh, run the whole test suite. 
remove the stuff that I commented out. And yeah, notice that the uh, that the test actually ran in uh, well a very little amount of time, and that's again because um, like when you register delayed callbacks, like temp this uh, this register delayed callback timer or this amount of time, it's not wall clock time; it's like temporal's virtual time, and the testing framework actually like advances through register delayed callbacks in like a. Um, <sighs> I'm gonna put it, it goes through these callbacks and, um, and so when the app access when your workflow accesses what time is it um, this uh, this like it'll actually will see like the virtual time not the actual physical that's the uh, walk up time so yeah very bad description unfortunately I'll have to work on that. <laughs> Hey, we're all, we're all trying to describe it. time. That's why uh, I think that's why they call it the temporal. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I, you know, honestly, I think that that is the right description of it. Um, although in JavaScript, obviously, we have we have competitors um, <laughs> with, with the temporal API in JavaScript. Um, but no, I think this is a really good walkthrough of like the, the testing steps and what you need to know when you're testing temporal. Um, actually, it's you know it's surprisingly straightforward once you get past like, some of the, maybe the design patterns that um, you might need to have when thinking about async and, and signaling stuff. Um, any other possible directions that you want to explore next or anything else you want to advise people against when, when testing? Let's see. Um... I think another interesting thing that's worth noting is that like this workflow does actually complete, mm -hmm. even though um, even though the workflow is technically infinite, unless you uh, unless you check out, it's basically oh, yeah. we have an infinite for loop. Yeah. So the interesting thing uh, uh, here's a little bit of trivia for you. What's uh, what's the default um, what's the default timeout for a temporal workflow? Yeah, I mean I happen to know this because I wrote the docs, but ten years. Uh -oh. <laughs> so yeah, technically this um, so technically execute workflow executes about ten years worth of virtual time. Seriously? Oh my yeah. god! Well, I mean, like I could uh, I could increase this to uh, to something quite egregious, like you know, time dot hour times ten, and it'll still work. Yeah, it doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, could probably crank it up to time dot years times nine. And it oh was yeah, like, you see the nine hour fifty nine minute forty nine point nine nine. It seems to it seems to round things in an interesting way. So yeah. it lopped off ten I seconds. I think it's um I think it's only because like there's like a time skip oh. ten seconds here. So I think um this right here. Oh my god, that's precise to the previous uh, the previous time. Plus the one millisecond. Here it, so timer duration one one millisecond, ten seconds, and then ten hours. Yeah. But here it's okay. You know, like oh, I wait one millisecond. Now I wait ten. So this is basically like ten hours minus ten seconds plus one millisecond. Got it. That's actually very precise. I I actually I was blaming, you know, I E I triple E seven five four uh for the floating point thing, but actually it's precise because the point nine 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 is. Uh, you know, deducting one millisecond, which is great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, so so must we test? Must must we assert that the workflow is completed? Uh, why not just delete that line? Um, not strictly necessary. You're right. Okay. But, um, it was it was something that um that the docs had that I just kind of copied because I figured err on the side of um err on the side of be doing the same thing that the docs do. Yeah. But okay, as far as I can tell, it's not very necessary and uh, doesn't provide much value because the workflow will be completed afterwards anyway. I don't really know of a way where like the workflow can continue or can still can be like not completed after the uh, after execute workflow is done. Okay. If we find any, if we find out otherwise, we will learn and make a se separate video on why workflows have to be completed. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a really great recap. Um, it helps people understand testing. I think our discussion back and forth, my questions to you probably are people are questions that people had anyway. So uh, thanks so much for taking the time, Val. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Sean. Right. I'm going to...